Hi, Philip. Hi, Lee. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. Good evening from Japan. I am a representative of Trending Office here. And today I'm going to show you and share with you many wonderful projects from Aoni. Let me share the PowerPoint first. So, sorry. Okay, I put you here, done. Okay, what I found from this interview with Hashimoto-san from Aoni, this is the things I learned, takes the con connect us with knowledge, history, life, culture, and also give us a discovery for future in the method we had. Okay, this is Tekista uh, Aoni. It's located in Kyoto, Uji. This is really well known with the world heritage architecture. It's called Byodo in Hoodo. It gives the uh, nine centuries beauty of architecture there. And also we have graphic on the coin. And this is Mr. Hashimoto, Hashimoto-san, I had an interview. He is a master of all natural fibers and he talks about many wonderful things about fiber and yarn and textiles. And this is, I put a Japanese character, Chinese character um, to show you how it is written in our language. And also I will show you many different type of fabric today. And of course, they are having many wonderful Japanese fibers, but at the same time, they also find and connect, share, method, create market, and pass the button to the next generation, connecting all Asia. In his atelier, we can discover the beauty of transformation from plants, fiber, yarn, and textiles. It is really hard to realize in our daily life. This is Basho. Okay. It is from Okinawa. And this is Lotus. It's from Inlay Lake, Myanmar. And this is Kozo. Paper Marbury. This is from China, especially from Yang from Chokei and textile from Funan. A rustic and beautiful and at the same time soft and white like a clay. And also this is Kuzu, East Asian arrowroot. This is from Laos and they don't have here so much and strong enough to use both warp and weft. And this is Linden from Laos, telling us the wonderful strength of trees. It is really hard and soft at the same time, earthy, beautiful brown. And this is Tassa silk from India, using branch part of cocoon to make yarns, rustic but full of energy of life and almost like wool or cashmere feeling. It's so beautiful, transparent and tactile. And Pina, I took this picture by myself and I really found it's so transparent and almost like a light in the morning. And we, it is really hard to imagine such delicate, beautiful fiber in such hard uh, leaves of pineapples. And this is Rami. And we have a many, many uh, story about Rami and hemp. And I'm going to show you later on. And this is different type of Rami from outside skin of Rami and also thin Rami and inside in the in between. In the center is from Japan. And the left is from China. And I found, I, I got this material from Aoni-san and I took picture by myself. It's so beautiful and almost like a golden 
shiny hair. And the light side of this texture is really old archive from Meiji era. And this Rami is from Funan, China. So still they are weaving like this. It's really delicate and thin and transparent. And this is also beautiful textile from Rami skin. Using outside skin to create rustic, beautiful yarn and textiles. And this is hemp, beautiful natural green hemp. I will introduce you. This is from Mont Tribe Thai. The green, this green, I found this green will disappear gradually, but the green inside of the yarn stays for long. And this green to brown is amazing. And I imagine the land and landscape and the people who is working on, it is really inspiring. And this is Taima hemp from Japan. And left side is really important, precious archive from Aoni-san. It is Japanese hemp textile and also hemp um, fibers. And also he has hemp from Andong, Korea. As, we, as I see from his archives, we feel really close to other cultures, near cultures in Asia, and we have a different languages, also different approaches, but we have the same aesthetic beauty and also method, and we share many different um, techniques together. And this reminds me also, let me think how we can work it together in future And today I'm going to talk about many talk about about Asa because we call Asa for hemp and rami. And this is really important fiber in Japanese history and culture. And also I found from this interview, this is a hope of the future. Okay, I made this um, overview for you and it, it is kind of surprising also I didn't know so much because almost all our life we use only hemp and rami in Japan. Only after Edo era we use mostly cotton and other fibers of course but before we had hemp and rami. And this uh, Kunio Yanagida, his folklorist, in his book he wrote what Japanese had been wearing was mainly Asa hemp and rami. And this is an um, interesting discovery for myself also because I use this Chinese character Asa a lot in my life already, but I didn't know how it made because top side Asa letter, this means rami, linen, hemp, everything. But it is made with two different parts. The Loof part is rustic house, and inside is how people soak the grass in the water to make rami fiber out of it. So one Chinese character, this character tells us how much this fiber connect our language, also culture and history. And of course, uh, Lin, uh, Asa, this hemp and lamy have been using in various cultural relationship, not only for fashion, but also for rituals. And also this is really very much related with Shinto and also emperor. And this is also surprising because we found this earth wear from Jomon period. It's almost around 13,000 years ago. They already used hemp rope to make pattern on the earth wear. 
and in the one of the oldest history book written in 912. It is called Kojiki. In this book already, Asa hemp was mentioned in the story. As I think many of you already know, in Japan, many people believe we have various gods in stone, water, air, shrine, table, and insect and flowers and leaves. We have various gods and one sun god. She disappeared in the cave because she is a bit annoyed and she is a bit upset. And all the other gods feel so sorry and also anxious and they wants to take her out from the cave. And then they start dancing and singing outside because outside is much fun, so you should go, go come out. And for this ceremony, they use three important things, jewels and mirror, and one is white hemp. So you know how much white hemp, hemp was in your life and also culture in the history already. So naturally, hemp, lami, have been grown everywhere in Japan like this, from north to south. But this was a mention I got from one buyer in the textile fair in foreign country. She said, if you say this fabric is made in Japan, but most of the materials are imported, actually, I'm wondering if this is really made in Japan or not. Ryan, what do you cultivate? It was quite a shocking comment for me because we know weavers and we know still textile region and we have the technique to weave. But yes, it's only 3% we harvest in Japan. This is reality. But in the interview with Hashimoto-san from Aoni, I found so beautiful possibility, also dream and future in Lami and hemp in Japan. Because still in Showamura, in Fukushima, they grow Lami here. It's almost like four hour drive from Tokyo center. And it's a bit north part of Japan. It's beautiful countryside with full of water, pure air, Yes, this is how they grow rami in spring. They start putting fire on the farm. And this is the start of the farm before seeding. And seeds coming out. And they grow really, really high, big, tall. And then they protect the making wall around to protect from hard wind and they keep like really like a baby. And in July, we have a long uh, rainy season in June. And after this rainy season stop, we welcome summer and they start cutting rami one by one by hand. And what is beautiful is they cut only the quantity they can work in a day because they just cut and work and cut and work and they keep on doing this in the beginning of summer. And the way they do is also beautiful because they soak this lami into the water for one night and then take it off the skin. And Hashimoto-san mentioned me the specialty of this lami in Fukushima is a softness and also pureness and it's amazing tactility. Maybe this is because of this water, because we have a beautiful water here and also soft water. And they peel off by hand. And the skin, in the skin, they have a beautiful, shiny, almost like a silver fiber hidden. And they make special tool to work on it. And then they dry them under the roof for a few days. And 
summer finish and we finish autumn and winter comes, they start spinning. They start working one by one and they make thread by hand. And it is amazing that it takes three months to make thread for one obi belt. So it is really huge work and delicate work. And also they are still weaving in this uh, Shoramura. It is called Karamushiori. But at the same time, they also invite young generations and other people to experience from seeding to weaving. Let them stay in the village from spring, from seeding and stay with summer and autumn and winter and they finish one product by themselves. And then few of them start finding this project is really promising and also they want to go more. They can stay there and they can stay as a weaver or farmer. And also they are making this yarn and also fiber and they give this materials to next each year the Niigata prefecture. It is well known with Echigo Jozen, Echigo Jof. And this place is called Minami Uonuma and Ojiya area in Niigata. And most of the people who likes food and also sake, they know this place because of the wonderful rice and rice wine and water and beautiful snow country. And there they create this beautiful, transparent, almost dryness and tactile weaving for a long time for Japanese kimono. And this is also a significant story I should talk is Echigo Jofu textile snow washing. It is done in early spring in May, in March, and still lots of snow because in winter time, they have almost like a two meter snow there. But in spring, suddenly the sunshine comes really strong and sunlight, and they put textile directly on the snow and leave it. And then they become white. It's like a snow breaching. This is like a, this, this using the function of breaching plant fiber by generating ozone and snow melts. So this is naturally done for a long time. And they just leave this textile for one week. And they also has a poem and also songs about this snow breaching, snow washing. It said like a spinning year with um, in the snow and we put this one into the snow water and also we uh, dry them on the snow. So snow makes textile and we make textile, but also mother nature makes textile. And this is a result. Left side is before snow breaching. Right side is after snow breaching. I got this sample from Niigata prefecture and they explain me that this is not only for the beginning of the production, but also after using or after like waiting 10 years or 12 years and you have some stains and also a bit darker and also you have some stain from the soles and sweat, it become white like this, only using snow, no chemical, only snow, sunshine and people's dedicate makes textile white. And also it's really important to talk about hemp in Japan because Hashimoto-san mentioned me the wonderful story and also future possibility of hemp in Japan. And this uh, quote, like this winter was such cold as five layers of garment. This was a saying in Japan and this five layers might be hemp in your life because we didn't have any technical fiber for a long time, of course, and we don't have wool and cotton is quite recent one and lamy is kind of thinner and hemp is completely 
bit hairy and also warms inside. Of course, as you all know, hemp is wonderful fiber. It grows fast and less water. And of course, it's strong and beautiful. We used to have more than 4,000 hectare farms in Japan of hemp. We had many, many hemp farms and farmers. But after World War II, the hemp farm was banned by the rule of DHQ, GHQ, and almost everything has gone, but we still keep a few. And now 2010, even only 10 hectares left and only 70 farmers there. But Hashimoto-san found if technology also nowadays change of mind can help hemp revival into our daily life and fashion and textile and interior because hemp itself has a long filament and we can make twisting, making yarn, using machine also. And this light side of uh, yarn is hemp. And this is for hemp denim yarn. And he is thinking of making hemp denim. And he thought this hemp denim will going to be changed, some kind of change in Japanese farm and also fiber. Together with Buaiso Indigo Atelier in Japan, this fifth node, because we have been there, it's already three, four years ago, I think, 2018 summer. Philip took many textile designers from many countries, and we visited this wonderful indigo atelier to learn the indigo farm and also the way of dyeing and also the beauty of itself. And this was the picture of the time. And also what is inter interesting with hemp denim is uh, in Japan, denim has been and also is a really important question. We don't use denim as like tools. We admire, we love, we wear, we create, we pay more and we collect denim. And then the, the price of the denim is much higher than average of other country. This is a result and also calculation uh, written in the, in the report. And also 80 million of denim pants are sold in a year in Japan. And this entry, denim is a big issue because of this uh, making process and also dyeing process. And of course, denim is uh, for everyone not only for young generation, but also family and also elders and also fashion and also for daily life. And in this interview today um, with Hashimoto-san, this is the conclusion I reach is a knowing from fiber and textile is to think different about what we believe we knew. And also it is to think about future, people, culture, the role of us and the meaning of precious days. And also this is really interesting because once I call, for example, like Niigata and also Showa in Fukushima, they explain to me really passionate about their first, uh, farms and fibers and it is still small quantity, but the people who engage has uh, lots of dreams. So Hashimoto-san from Aoni and Ogawa-san from Echigo Jofu and also Nemoto-san from Rami Pro Promotion Team. Let us open the new perspective toward the fashion of tomorrow, I thought. So you can imagine if the hemp name will be the standard in Japan and if we start growing hemp more again near us, 
And if we know more about farm and fiber and also textile and how it makes and how it grows and how beautiful it is, we naturally think we need to keep the environment beautiful and also we need to be nice and we need to be conscious about this one. So the one fiber, one knowledge connect us like almost like weaving all the knowledge and the techniques and ideas and hope together. So thank you everyone. This is from Japan. Ori, this is amazing. I love you. We love you. All the comments are amazing. The snow, you know, I, I could not believe my eyes. I it didn't is, know. It's, it's so beautiful. It's, yeah, yes. this, this is the hope we need. This is exactly, this is exactly what is vital. Thank you. you it's 12 o'clock. It's midnight. No, no I'm really so, happy to be here. Yes. So maybe you can still uh, stay up a little bit to see the rest. Hmm. Yes. Anyway, so you're formidable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kaori. It was wonderful mm -hmm. to hear you talk about the poetry of Japan that we miss so much. And it was nice to see uh, the photo from our trip four years ago. I can't believe yes. it's been four years <laughs> with Marcella. So thank you very much. Uh, we're going to